Have you ever wondered what goes into raising silk moths from start to finish? Let me show you my daily routine. I start by checking the cocoons to see if any moths are stuck. Right now, I'm picking up the cocoons and feeling the pupa rolling inside. I only do this after my first moth emerges or if it's been 14 days since spinning. If you're wondering whether checking cocoons like this hurts the moths, don't worry, it doesn't. At this stage, they're far enough along in development to handle it. If you prefer to cut all the pupa out to prevent moths from getting stuck, that's an option too. Let me know if you'd like a detailed video on safely cutting them out. Before I checked the cocoons, I removed the moths that emerged naturally. Now I'll place them in a tote for breeding and egg laying. I use parchment paper to collect the eggs because it makes storing them a lot easier. Tomorrow I'll remove the males and move them to their retirement home, at least that's what I call it. Sometimes the males won't detach from the females, so you might need to separate them to avoid overbreeding, which can harm the female. Speaking of helping moths, let's get this little one out of their cocoon. You'll need a few tools, an X-Acto knife, tweezers, mini scissors, and a soft tipped paintbrush. First, I examine the cocoon for the softest spot, which usually is where there's a meconium stain. That's a clue to the moth's positioning, making cutting safer. I like to pull away loose threads and make small cuts to avoid harming the moth. Once the hole is big enough, I let the moth come out on its own. Most are eager to emerge, but occasionally one prefers to stay put. With the moth settled, it's time to clean the silkworm tote. Usually I transfer the worms to another tote, but since my smaller totes are occupied, I'll replace the old parchment paper with fresh sheets and add new mulberry chow. Cleaning silkworm takes time. It took me about 30 minutes today, but as they grow larger, it gets easier and faster since you can handle them by hand instead of the tweezers. Gloves are always an option, but I prefer bare hands for better control. Now that the silkworms are cleaned up, I'll close the tote to keep the chow moist and prevent any escapes. And here is how I organize my moths. These two clear totes hold my domestic silk moth cocoons that are going to emerge. On the left is my polyphemus moth and on the right is my luna moth. Let's get a closer look. I love her colors and when she sits on the bay window, she looks like stained glass. She doesn't really enjoy being handled for long periods, so I'll return her to her safe space. As for the luna moth, he dislikes being handled even more, which makes getting face shots of him impossible. Anytime I go near him, he flops around like a little fish. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Click that subscribe button and stick around for more moth content.